Hello, today we're going to be taking a quick look at Bode Linux. Bode Linux, if you're not familiar with it, is basically Ubuntu 10.04 with the Enlightenment desktop interface on top of it instead of the default GNOME or KDE or XFCE or LXDE whatever interface that you're accustomed to. And the entire point behind it, as you may have noticed from the screenshot slideshow that's going on, is that it's supposed to be excellent performance, very minimalist, easily customizable, basically just whatever you want to make of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things that make Bode really unique in my opinion. Now the first time you start up Bode Linux, you'll be greeted with this initial configuration, this initial setup. And basically it asks you to choose your language. There are only two offered initially. We'll go ahead and choose English. It asks you to choose a profile, and there are quite a few here available. See, you've got the bear, and it shows you a screenshot of what it'll look like. It's just a bear desktop with a clock in the center. You've got the desktop, which has a bar across the top, and the application launcher across the bottom. You've got Ecomorph, which is basically the same sort of desktop as you're accustomed to, but with comp is enabled. You've got Fancy, which just has a couple of extra widgets. Basically, the biggest difference with most of these are the custom widgets that come pre-installed, pre-configured with it. The laptop is a lot like the desktop one, but with a couple of extra laptop-specific widgets. The tablet and netbook one, though, is slightly different and has a lot of interesting features, and we'll look at that in just a minute. But let's go ahead and start off with the desktop one, just take a look at it. It's got all these different application settings you can choose, different applications you want on your quick launch bar, but basically, that's it. We are now at our desktop and ready to start working. You'll notice the application launcher did not start up. That's because Compiz is not working in a virtual machine. I've tested this on a live machine on my laptop and on a desktop at work, and it loaded up very quickly. The application launcher at the bottom worked just fine. Compiz worked on the open source drivers with no problems. Now one thing that should have happened if that had been the initial setup, and I will admit that was not the first setup, is it should have asked me what theme that I wanted to choose. However, if you want to change that, you can click on the desktop or click on the main menu, wherever you want to go. Go down to settings and go to theme, and here are the default themes that you're given. There are more that you can get, you can download them. You see here we've got an online button. But the ones that we can choose from, you see we've got a beauty body, which changes everything to a bright gold color a Maria D which makes everything kind of dark and green, a sky body which is sort of light and blue, a grayish body which is kind of gray, a lux body which is kind of black and gold, and the default which is of course kind of a light grayish and uh, black on highlights. And basically, if you're familiar with Enlightenment, this should all be pretty commonplace to you. You've got the Enlightenment menu here, you've got all your different applications, that's the other thing about it. Like I said before, it's very minimalist, so the, the applications that came installed out of the box were LX Terminal, I've gone ahead and installed Xterm as a part of something else, uh, Firefox 4 Beta 12, actually it was Beta 11, an update pushed it up to 12, uh, Network Manager, and that's it. <laughs> the only other thing I've got installed right now is Boxy, because that was a one-click installer from their website. We'll get into that in just a little bit, though. Another interesting thing to mention about Bodhi is that if you go into the places and you select a folder such as home, you'll see that the default file browser we're greeted with is actually not what you'd expect. You know, I, I, like I said, I'm not familiar with Enlightenment, not terribly into Enlightenment, but if you go up here to help and go to about, this is Nautilus, but it's Nautilus Elementary. So it's kind of like default Nautilus, but with a lot of the uh, what's considered to be bloat or filler removed, so it's very lightweight. So if you're a fan of Nautilus Elementary, this is definitely going to be a bonus for you. But basically, other than that, it's pretty much standard Enlightenment. I will admit I don't have a ton of experience with Enlightenment, but what I remember from using it several years ago, this does seem to be pretty standard, pretty stock to me. You do always have the option to come to Settings, All, Settings, and click Profiles, and you can go and choose a different profile like we did on Startup. See, so you've got Bear Desktop, Ecomore, Fancy Laptop, and Tablet. So basically, at any time, if you're not 100% pleased with the choice you've made, you can go back in and choose a different profile. That's one of the things I really like about this so far, is it's sort of skinnable, not really, but kind of. Let's go ahead while we're here and take a look at that tablet slash netbook interface. If I hit apply on that, it quickly changes it for us. You see we've got different icons on the desktop now. We've got a slightly changed bar at the top here. And then we've got a much different bar at the bottom. You see here it says switch, back, forward, and close. And basically, if I open an application now, 
It's going to open Firefox, give me a little error because I did it too fast. And then I don't have the top bar on the application like I would normally have, but I can use the back, forward, and close buttons to switch between apps and to close it. So basically, it's an interesting little interface. It's something that I could get kind of used to. You see here we've got the option to go between different apps, kind of like an alt tab if you didn't have it. You've got a button here that gives you an on-screen keyboard that is easily customizable. You see you can change that to the full keyboard. You've also got a button here to do a split screen option. I can do it either vertically or horizontally, doesn't matter, whichever I want. And then you've got home that just goes back to the desktop. The point I'm trying to make here is Enlightenment, Bodhi Linux, very lightweight, very minimalistic, not a whole lot out of the box. If you do want more software, the Ubuntu Software Center is not installed by default, surprisingly enough. If you go down to All, System, there we go, we've got Synaptic Package Manager by default and the software sources where you can add in different Ubuntu software sources. But in addition, the first time you open up Firefox, you should probably notice we're on the Bodhi Linux website and there's a section here for how to install new software. If I go ahead and open that, it says to get new software, you can go to software.bodilinux.com. So once we get there, it has a list of commonly installed applications. Here's the full suite of what's considered Bodhi Linux software, a lighter set that has less software in it, and then all the different categories with individual things you can install. For example, browser plugins, Flash, very easy to install. I click install now. It takes just a second. It actually runs the apt. You see it. I've already installed it apparently. Uh, the one good thing that I did like about this though, and I know I'm kind of jumping around, you see the download button here. That's awesome. If I have a different machine and for some reason this one doesn't have network access, I can go to that other machine, click download, and download the flashplayer.bod file, which you see here it's 4.7 megabytes. It's a completely standalone installer and you just bring that over, you run it, it's got all the dependencies and everything it will need to make it run appropriately, and there you're up and running. Again, Bodhi Linux, very lightweight, uh, does not come with much of anything out of the box, like I said, very minimalistic. They give you a decent choice of software here on the website. Uh, go ahead and check it out if you like, bodhilinux.com slash software, I believe software.bodhilinux.com I said earlier. Uh, one thing that I've noticed did not work for me, and I don't know if that's going to be fixed before the final release. This is still a release candidate. Uh, Kden Live was not installable, so that was a little bit of a ding for me. But other than that, I, it seemed to work pretty well. It, the performance was very decent for me. It started up pretty quickly, 10 to 15 seconds on an older machine at work, a little bit less than that on VirtualBox here at home. My laptop was about the same, 10 to 15 seconds, so uh, very decent. One thing I would like to see out of it, and I, I don't know if this will affect most people or not, is an easy way to install the graphics drivers. Like I said before, the best way to install software right now is either to go to the Bodhi Linux site, which doesn't seem to have the graphics drivers easy to install there, or to go into the system, 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 <laughs> synaptic package manager. And it's perfectly possible to install the NVIDIA or ATI drivers through here, but if you don't know what you're doing, if you're a brand new user, one, you're not going to know how to get down to that. And two, it's just not as obvious, I guess. Maybe, uh, since there are scripts for other things, there are uh, some common configuration things, there are installers on the Bodhi Linux site. I would like, I would personally like to see uh, an NVIDIA and an ATI graphics installer, possibly even one for some wireless chipsets. I don't know if they're pre-configured or not. I know that my Intel card worked out of the box. I don't believe it detected the Broadcom card in my laptop. But basically, I know this is running kind of long, uh, very, very impressed with the Enlightenment interface so far. It's, like I said, very lightweight, very minimalistic, allows you to do with it exactly what you want to do without getting this full giant package of software. But through the website, you do have the option to install a lot of software at a very, very easy one-click installation. And you've got a bunch of different choices for different skinning type options. If you come back into the profiles, you, like I said, you've got a bunch of them available that are very easy to switch between. So, I don't know, what do you think about Bodhi Linux? If you're interested in trying it, I'll have a link to where you can download it in the source code below. If you have tried it, let me know what your opinions and your experiences are. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.